With that, let me introduce Brenda Wilton. I met Brenda, I think it's really pushing a year, which I can't even believe. It was last spring that we met at an event, and I was so inspired by her personal story and absolutely with the work that she's trying to do to make lives easier for people with challenges. And that's so much what GAPS is. We are not about the research and the medicine. We're just about trying to make life easier on a day-to-day -day basis. And I think she fits so well with our model. So she's been at this for four years. I think sometimes she thinks it's more like 40. But um, she has a wonderful story to share. And I'm really thrilled to have you here with us today. So Brenda Wilton, CEO of Authored Carol. So let me just start out by thanking you for allowing me to come and speak with you and I want to do this more as a fireside chat because I learn as much from you as I hope I can impart some wisdom to you today in whatever capacity you're here to represent whether it's you in need of clothing as the person wearing the clothing or you in need of clothing as the caregiver providing the clothing so how many today had to get up and get dressed can I just say a show of hands so it looks like we're all in the majority here how many have to help someone else get dressed, whether it's a young child, or a husband that just is putting on a coat that has too many layers, or a wife that needs a zipper up the back? Has anyone experienced that as well? Again, we're in the majority. So every day we get up, we're a day older and we have to get dressed. I'm gonna back up and start and tell you how it became a situation where I didn't realize back in well, while you're coming back in I'll share my story so I'm gonna take you back a few years I was in ninth grade I was a gymnast a cheerleader and had just made the varsity track team I was I, I beat the fastest girl in Bradford which I was so excited because that was part of what I was really into is running during school screenings in gym class you had to bend over and touch your toes and if they discovered scoliosis that was what they discovered then you neck got sent to the next level which was a doctor visit, and I did. Uh, the second night of practice, I was asked to come into the office and told to pick up all my books. I was going into traction for 30 days at a Shriners Hospital that was about three hours and 15 minutes from my hometown. I had no idea what I was going to be involved with, but I was in traction for 30 days, and if they could correct the scoliosis by one degree, I would come out in a Milwaukee back brace. If they couldn't correct it, then I would go into a surgical situation where the surgery was one year, the Milwaukee back brace was four years. So I was praying diligently it would be the surgery. I didn't really understand the ramifications of that. But I came out with a Milwaukee back brace. And I, I only, I destroyed every picture and I was home a while ago and I found one picture. And it's so funny because I, I was preparing for this last night and I found it. It completely changed my orientation for dressing in the morning. I came out with a back brace that had a leather girdle, and in the back was a men's belt buckle, and in the front was a bar that held my chin steady, and behind were two bars that held my neck in a particular uh, position, screws here and screws here. Well, uh, Frankenstein's bride and Tinchin were two kind names, but you completely changed your orientation. For me, it was more about the dressing component because you men get up and you put on your pants and your shirt, it doesn't bother you. We women, we get up and we are assured that everyone's gonna be looking at us and we wanna look just so. So my clothing didn't fit and it wasn't about just increasing the size, it was about completely changing the way I dressed. So I'm gonna show you this from a distance. But I was thinking about it, I actually had an outfit that became almost my uniform because it was a way to dress quickly because I still had to catch the school bus. My parents are not the type that felt sorry for me. My dad just said, this is part of life, you just have to adapt to it. And I'm glad. I look back now and realize there were a lot of things that it really gave me a great benefit. But here I am, and I don't move from the hip to the neck. And I have in a plaid shirt that looks more like a men's shirt. And yes, those are men's, or actually boys' painter pants. At the time, I wore painter pants because the fabric was thin enough that it was more supple. The denims at that time were really, really thick and uncomfortable. And so I, that became my uniform. And I just made sure that it was clean all the time until my grandmother had three granddaughters and she would treat us for birthday and Christmas and she would take us shopping and we got a piece of clothing or an outfit, whatever. And we were the ones that chose, but we had a limit. And one particular Christmas, I was really struggling, struggling because 
I got this in ninth grade, and I wore it 23 out of 24 hours a day, ninth, 10th, and 11th grade. Those were the formative years. And then my senior year, I was out of it during the day and actually went back to cheering. There were certain restrictions on life from then forward that I couldn't do on a regular basis, but I, I got back to normal clothing. But at this particular time, I was now in high school, and she took me to this really nice women's shop, and the woman that waited on me, this young woman, was the former beauty queen from the high school. And she was absolutely gorgeous and always looked gorgeous. And when I walked into the shop, my grandmother said, we want to find something really special for my granddaughter. And she didn't need to point out what I was dealing with. And the woman took one look at me, and she looked at my face, she didn't look at my body, and she went right over to a, shop, to a, to a rack, and she pulled out the most beautiful outfit, and I put it on, and I felt beautiful. It didn't matter, because when I looked in the mirror, I just saw this incredible outfit. And it stuck with me for years. So now I'll fast forward. We moved down here 10 years ago, and my mother-in-law was blind and living in a skilled nursing facility in Bradford, Pennsylvania, and I was still responsible for her clothing. And I would try and shop once a quarter because she was petite and blind, but she always wanted to look nice, and it became a challenge as her caregiver responsible for clothing to find things that fit her and were comfortable and that would work well for her current living situation. I was still doing the laundry, so I didn't worry so much about what would melt in the dryer, because industrial strength dryers do melt sequins and a lot of other things. But what I realized is they started sending me that she needed larger and larger sizing. And she's just a little tiny petite woman and I couldn't understand it. So I went and started asking questions and they said, well, it's harder to dress her. Now I had provided clothing, but I hadn't really been thinking about the dressing. And I'm thinking she can't see, but she can still dress. But actually what it was is she started to have limitations on how she could put her hands over her head. And the longer she would be seated, she became more difficult to have the same type of mobility that we have every morning when we get up and get dressed. I started paying more and more attention and realized some of the things that I picked out for her because I knew she wanted to look nice were not really applicable to her situation in life. So I shared with a gentleman here earlier. Have any of you had a situation where you're helping someone dress or you're dressing yourself and you suddenly realize you do not have the same capability maybe to put your arms up in your head, over your head and squeeze into a shirt that fits you, but it's a struggle to get on over your body? Anyone deal with that? Exactly. So some of those things helped me to look at clothing differently. And it wasn't that I needed to have her change what she was comfortable in. I had to change what I would look for out in the market space, and it was a real struggle. That's where this was truly birthed, this whole concept. I came back to graduate school and approached the professor. I was in the Clemson's MBA program. You had to come up with an idea to market. And I started talking about a line of clothing for the people who get up in the daytime every morning and have to dress for the daytime and then undress and then move into something for the nighttime. In the process of this MBA, we had to interview 100 people on whatever our project was. I started talking to a lot of executive directors at long-term care like the Pearl and some of the at-home places like Pruitt Health and people like Bill who deal with a, a multitude of different populations that when we say aging, we're all aging. Every day, we're a day older. In the course of these interviews, I discovered that one particular administrator said people who, who are not here every day will send their family members clothing that they really want them to wear and they don't realize how much it hurts to put that clothing on. And sometimes they end up with bruises or struggles because the clothing no longer fits their body. And one gentleman said, and it was in uh, um, Canada, we're actually forcing people into clothing that wasn't designed for their bodies. And that became the focus of my whole line of clothing. And I'll just fast forward a little because of the, the time frame that we have here. With all of that, I started asking a lot of people, like everyone here in this room, what do, what do you like to wear? What do you like to wear? What do you find comfortable? What do you struggle with not being able to put on? And I'm just gonna ask Bill and Joel to stand up, and this will give an example of what I found. These are two gentlemen that I asked to come and model. So if, if you will, walk up front here. Now, when we look at these two gentlemen, ladies, what do we notice? What do we notice? Anyone? Just, what do we notice? Very nice. Okay, for men, I gave, um, both of them have blue pants and striped shirts, and um, they can wear whatever they want. The majority of the people here in the Southeast region, they wear khaki pants. And so, both of them came in khaki pants. They both look great in these pants, and they both put on the polo shirts 
Again, I have three colors, but it doesn't matter. They just have a personal preference. And I've had some gentlemen say to me, I won't wear stripes. Uh, do you have a solid? Some will say, I don't wear pockets. Do you have one without pockets? Those are the most details that you'll typically find from a, from a man. Nancy, do you mind standing up? Sandy, do you mind standing up? Thank you. So we three have on a garment that is pretty much the same, different color. Uh, Sandy has on the shirt version. Nancy has on the dress version that she has, has made personal by layering it over turtleneck, which I think is a great idea. And this has become my uniform because it works and it's comfortable. And with my background with the brace, I'm still prone to wear more dark colors, and I try not to draw any attention. So even putting on a belt is something that, for me, is a, is a situation that makes it difficult to be comfortable in. But as you can see, you're able to personalize these clothing just the way you wear it. Bill has his tucked in, Joel doesn't, and I actually have a version with a zipper at the hem. So they can wear it however is comfortable for them. Nancy put jewelry on and boots, leggings, and a turtleneck. Mine's heels, hose, and a belt. And Sandy has a scarf and a pair of pants. And we all look different. We don't look like we're in a uniform. So again, that was the purpose for this design. You guys can go ahead and sit down, and I'm going to call you up again individually. So I didn't want anyone to feel like they were in a uniform, because then we lose our personality. So this clothing has been a labor of love, and the final attributes of some of the clothing are as a result of my dad. My dad is, um, he was 82 when I started school, and the first year he was having a, uh, he was working and discovered that his, literally his chest cavity split open. Years ago he had had a mesh surgery, and he walked upstairs, or walked up to the, my, my house, and my mother's house, and said, I don't know what's going on, my shirt's wet. It turns out, that his mesh had disrupted and then the next three months in and out of a lot of medical communities and brought home, actually brought home on hospice, he's alive and still works today, as a result of a lot of different things, but he wasn't able to dress. And my mother is a little petite woman and he's a six foot and a big barrel chested man. When he came home on hospice, he didn't want anybody to see him. And he runs a company, he, I had to fly up and drive him home, I'm in the middle of five children. He, um, wanted to be in the hospital bed in the living room with the, the shades all drawn, he didn't want the lights on, and he would just sit there until the wound care people came and they would get him up, it would take two, and they'd move him over to a chair, change him, put him back in bed, he would cover himself up and he didn't want to talk. So my mother started talking about it and he said, hey, I can't even get dressed, I can't even get dressed. I don't want to see anybody, I don't want to see him in my bed clothes. To him, that was robbing him of his dignity and it didn't just affect him. My three brothers work for his company and they couldn't understand because here's the man that is a very strong, solid work ethic and we were not taught that you let things overcome. You just, you just find a different way. So the wound care nurse understood some of what was dealing with and she started sharing with us that try to normalize. So we found a shirt. My mother started dressing him in a shirt and he would sleep in a button down shirt like most of you men have on. And my mother would dress him before anybody got there he still didn't want to be seen, but that would give him more of a sense of manhood and dignity. Now, he's not the type that he's, I don't know that he's ever worn a polo, and he doesn't wear blue jeans. He's never worn blue jeans. He wore dicky pants and a lot of chambray shirts. So we started normalizing that. It was still a difficult situation to dress him because my mother's this little petite woman, and he's this big man, and he couldn't put his hands back, and everything hurt. So again, here's what maybe you don't think of when you're dressing. The person that's the caregiver is trying their best to assist. And sometime in that process, there's a little frustration because, what do you mean you can't get your arm back? You just got it back yesterday. Well, today it won't go back. And you're trying to help them, but you, they're trying not to express that they're losing more capacity to self-dress. And so they don't want to say, hey, my arm doesn't work that way any longer. So we need to be more sensitive and proactive and provide opportunities instead of pointing out Instead of pointing out limitations, we want to point out opportunities, and that's part of what this line is. It's opportunities to help them dress, help you dress them, or help them dress independently longer. The women's dresses in the top, like what Sandy have on, they actually have zippers that you can step in, and any men that are dealing with women that they're caring for, and they have to dress with dementia or Alzheimer or just the struggle of the daily moving the body, these dresses you step into, and we don't have time to do the demonstrations, but you literally 
stand them up one, sit them back down, both arms go in, pulled up, zip, zip. In about 45 seconds, a woman can be dressed and feels great. You can literally, with one of these types of dresses, they slip in and out, and then they have pockets, and a cell phone fits perfectly in this pocket, as well as a pair of glasses and tissues. A woman is dressed for the day and ready, and this can be, it can feel like a house, what they used to call moo's, a house dress, but it gives a little more dignity. And this is something you could take them to the doctor's office, you could take them to the mall, you could take them out to dinner if you dress it up a little bit. So it's got the flexibility that it transitions from whatever age and stage all the way up to if you're in a hospice program, and Joel helped me understand this, and you're sponge bathing, this allows to unzip and just be lowered to do the quick sponge bath, put it back on, and, and then with scarves, and just changing, as you all saw when I went outside, I wanted to demonstrate again about the personalization. They're cold. You put, a, you put a, just a poncho type over. If you don't have a poncho, but they're very cold and they just need a wrap because it's a chilly day, again, they look dressed. They don't look like they're running around in their pajamas. And if it's something where they're more comfortable wearing and they're the type of person that wears a belt, then allow them to put their belt back on but it's the way to personalize their dressing and not all look like they're in a uniform. Any questions so far? Uh, yes, yes, Nancy, I was gonna ask you to demonstrate how this works. And because she has a shirt on under it, it's a little bit more difficult, but I'm gonna show you how easy this is. So if she were seated, this simply comes up from the bottom, and you can, without having to put her arms up over her shoulders, you see how it's putting it in, pulling it up, and then literally in a matter of seconds, zipping, and she's ready for the day. And that works both with the top and with the, the top that Sandy has on, as well as the dress that Nancy has on. Thank you so much. And Nancy, I'm just gonna let you speak for a minute because um, Nancy was ordering something for her mother and saw this dress, and if you don't mind sharing. I have a 90-year-old mother that is in memory care in Minneapolis. She has Parkinson's. She's in a wheelchair. Um, she's very stiff, and she's having some extreme difficulties dressing. And when I met Brenda, I was it was right before the holidays when I was gonna go visit, so I did take some clothing up to her and she has a top um, that is the short version of this. Uh, when we looked at the clothing together, I tried the dress on. You know, I wear this for my personal clothing um, as well. I own this. I bought it for my mother. Uh, it's been a really nice piece of clothing for her with her situation and the folks that have to take care of her with that ease of dressing and making her feel um, beautiful for the day. And my mother likes accessories, so she wears scarves, she wears jewelry, and uh, one top, one color has been five outfits. So it's really very versatile. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. So uh, that's what I want to show you here. With different colors, just take a pant like this. Any color that we put with this gives the versatility. So there used to be a collection of clothing called Granimals. And I used that concept when I was designing so that one garment can mix and match with what you have in your wardrobe. So it's not like you have to start out and buy clothing every season. You can literally mix and match. And then a solid color works as well. So you have more than one outfit with just a couple of pieces. But because of time, I don't want to spend too much with um, the fashion aspect of it. I'm going to move over to, move over to the men. Maybe it's that one. Move over to the men and then we'll go back. So the men's clothes, Bill, would you come up so you can demonstrate? And I'm gonna have you sit in that chair to demonstrate. And then um, we'll talk about the two different styles of pants. So while Bill is taking off his belt, this particular <laughs> pant is a, um, is a pant that, if you don't mind just showing where the zips are. This is so when you're seated. There are times that when you're seated, it becomes a real difficult for toileting, for getting someone in and out of their clothing, and if they're larger than the person that's providing the care, 
to hold them up while you're assisting them with buttoning or unbuttoning their pants or whatever. So this pant was designed to be able to zip and unzip, especially from the seated position. One of the things that was a real struggle for my dad is the hour that someone would come in for respite care, he did not want some young woman, middle-aged woman, older man, anyone touching his fly and his button. So he would sit in pain and wait for my mother, and then he was frustrated with her, like, where have you been so long? Mama, I was only gone an hour. Well, it seems like you were gone half a day, because he had to go to the bathroom. And he didn't want someone else to be in his intimate space. And so these pants were designed that somebody can actually come in, and one of these people that are at the in-home care or in a community where it's bedside assistance, unzip the zippers, leave the room, give them the privacy and the dignity of being able to take care of themselves. So that's the purpose for this design of pants. So thank you very much. And then um, the pant that you didn't see demonstrated today or on, on a body is the single pleat in navy. And I actually have both the khaki and the navies in both versions, the zipper at the top and the zipper at the hem. This particular one is a real benefit for safety purposes. This was designed so that a person could be dressed with their socks and shoes on, which gives the traction for the stability when you stand them up. And also for the person that's dressing independently that may spend some time either in a wheelchair or struggling bedside to stand up and, and move around because they can leave their socks and shoes on and when they have to move about, it gives them the certainty of when they put their foot down, they're not going to slide. And we all know those little socks with the little pieces of rubber, they can be the cause of tripping. This allows the shoe, which they're accustomed to wear, to be able to be on all the time. And all of the pants have an adjustment at the back. My dad was a lot of steroids, so his weight would fluctuate anywhere from 5, 15 pounds. So rather than having to buy a new pair of pants every time he was on a medication, this actually unbuttons and comes around, and you can change the size by about two sizes. Welt pockets. Every pair of pants for the men has a pocket in the front. And from surveys, again, talking to all the people, all of the men want a pocket in the back for their wallet. So all men's pants are pretty consistent. And they're really comfortable. And Joel, if you don't mind just sharing about yours. Joel, since we first met at a um, trade show, and he shared his background and some of his own personal issues and some of those that he contends with during the day, he washes and wears this. And I ask him to a lot of the events that I attend. So Joel, can you share? Thank you, Brenda. Uh, as Brenda said, I met her at a uh, senior expo. And I was working in hospice at the time. and, and what I did was uh, basically went to facilities and uh, talked to the administrators, the directors of nursing, uh, the wellness coordinators, and what I ended up doing was having Brenda come in and do a demonstration for our staff. And they really, really loved the idea of this clothing. And to the nursing aides who did the baths, they all felt that it would just make things so much easier for them to be able to uh, bathe the, their patients with dignity, uh, with respect, and it really helped them with their jobs. Uh, so when I started wearing the clothing, I wanted to go out and show that it was stylish, uh, and most of the time people don't even notice that I'm wearing adaptive clothing. And if you can see, I. I have it untucked, but that's basically because of the zippers on the side. I normally wear it with it tucked in. Um, I'm now moving into a uh, home health arena, which is skilled nursing, PT, OT, and I see where the, the patients that we have, they have needs. They, if they have a broken arm, they have to keep the arm close for a certain amount of time, four to six weeks, and the clothing itself could be very helpful for just being able to get in and out of the clothing with having their caregivers handle that. Um, okay, and so with that, I just, again, it, it, it's very stylish. Uh, most people don't even notice that I'm, I'm, I'm wearing anything different than what they would wear. Uh, as far as the, the feel, um, the, the, you know, for me, I don't like to iron a lot, so, <laughs> so the shirt is very, is very nice, non-iron. Uh, the pants are very, very nice without any ironing that is necessarily necessary. Um, have, they have big buttons on them. The, the zipper tabs are, are larger, 
so you can really get a good feel and good grip on it. And so that's why I like to wear it so that I can demonstrate it when I go out and speak to physicians and, and uh, facilities. That's how quickly, while Joel is talking, a caregiver could dress a person in a shirt. And as you saw when he was seated, rather than mine having to tug and pull, which is an injury to me as well as potentially for him, just simply by sliding it down behind, it was able to be taken, be put on. If you sit back down, I'll show you how easy it is to um, take it off. Now, this is a little bit different size, but again, it's the ease for the person that's assisting. And you saw that when it went over the head, if Bill were wearing glasses, he would not have even taken off his glasses. It was designed that way. And when Joel made reference to the larger buttons, no one knows that unless they hold them up to another shirt. But that's how easy it is to get on and off if you're dressing someone. So, gentlemen, thank you. The um, pants, there are, there are knit pants that'll be coming in the future for that with the, um, the top, which is the same fabric as the women's. And it zips the same way, and it goes on the same way that we talked about. So it can either be something where you, they're seated and you put it on starting from the bottom and their arms go down. Works well for rotator cuff or when you're having mobility issues at the top. And these also work really well. You unzip them, you pull them down to the waist, they stand up once, either a walker or when they're leaning against something, holding onto something, everything drops to the ground, including the pants. And then you just have to deal with dressing them for the evening. Are there any questions so far? I'd like to hear some of your dressing challenges. Is there anyone in particular that has something that they struggle with, either as being a person that is dressing themselves independently or assisting with dressing? Any particular struggles or challenges? Yes. Yes. Getting me replacement. Okay. A hip replacement. Exactly. So, so the pants with the zippers at the bottom, thank you for sharing. Uh, the pants with the zippers at the bottom would be very helpful. You would keep your socks and shoes on and then it makes it easier pulling up from the bottom because you're actually able to move them up further as well as the style that both gentlemen have on, zipping from the bottom. It's a, a line that works really well because you can, um, I'll just demonstrate, I can't ask them to take off there. <laughs> Pants I didn't give warning to have on athletic wear. But the zippers literally go down on the side. And everything of mine has a zipping, zipper protection. And so this would allow it to come up over your legs. And then you only stand up once and you pull the back side up. Once you're seated, you fold the front flap over. And again, it's just simply adjusting it from the size with the side zip. That's how easy a pant would go on. For the women's line, uh, all of the sleeves are three-quarter length, and the reason for that is when you're seated, it becomes a safety issue sometimes with the longer sleeves. They can catch on wheelchairs, they can catch on furniture, and they can drag in food. And so it's a situation where you, it, again, it's, it's more comfortable and you can layer it like Nancy did, but from a safety perspective, you don't have to worry about that. A lot of this clothing was designed to limit the liability and the potential for injury, seeing what happens when someone's assisting with dressing. Yes? I, they, they are, I'll show you, I brought several pair. So women, we are a little different. Uh, the wider waistband, which is comfortable so it doesn't roll. And most of our pants are designed so you can actually put them on with your socks and shoes on. They're very comfortable. And the side zip version works the same way as the men. And you can see this is prototype, so it's a different color of zipper. But it works the same way, which helps with the dressing. And then once seated, it's literally the same concept. You fold up the front, and then it just folds, folds up. And everything, um, Eva, is Eva still here? Uh, there's a woman here. Doncaster is where I learned a lot of attention to the details. It's an old, it's a women's trunk show. It's the oldest in the, in the country. High detail, very well made clothing. And I actually had the gentleman that was running the company consult with me for a while. So if you look at these inside or out, they're very, very well made. The fabrics are all real quality and we only use the best zippers. So they wash and wear. This 
dress has been washed not less than 20 times, washer, dryer, nothing special, Tide, Purex, whatever I happen to have, and packs wonderfully. So again, the quality of the clothing will last well. And for the men's pants, they're all a little brushed, so they're soft. And you're welcome to come up afterwards and feel this, touch it, and understand how soft and supple it is. And then again, all of the zippers are the best zippers that they manufacture anywhere. Yes. Well, uh, let me have Joel come up to demonstrate this. This is what I have right now for a pullover, and this is going to be coming out hopefully in a coat version. Yes, please. In a coat version within hopefully the next year. I'm a startup. It takes a little while to launch these businesses. So, But this is a version where my dad had the same struggle. And so it's, I'm going to put it over his head and slide it down. And you can step into this or over the head, and I'll just do this because it's easier for you to see. And so the arms, the best way to do it is you take both arms and put them on the lap to start with. And then again, the concept is no arms over the head, and you're not moving the shoulders too much. Yes, that's a good point. I'm gonna stand up. And that's a pullover that can layer over different things and you're not reaching back and putting it on. You wanna walk around a little bit, feel that fabric too? The sizing, yes, go ahead, Bill. Brandon, do you have anything for shorter petite women? I do not yet, but I will. I, I hope to do that. Most of the styles, because I can wear petites as well, I do, should wear petites. Most of the styles are, uh, I belt it so that it's the right length. Uh, the women's, pants would be a little bit long in the rise and we'll, we will be coming out with some petite styles hopefully within the next year. Yes, I hope so. And tall? <laughs> yes, yes. Absolutely tall as well. Petite's not going to work Well, I, I, I have to be honest. Again, as a startup, yes, exactly, they're not going to work for you. As a startup, I had to limit some of the styles and sizes and colors and such. And the biggest problem we women, and it was the pants. So I did everything but the pants for the women, and those will go into production later this year. I have samples here and they're ready to go, but the, the inseam length was a problem. For men's pants, I do sizes 30 waist up to size 50 waist, and I do inseams 30, 32, and 34. There is a woman that I can refer you to that can either lengthen or shorten pants, and she's done a remarkable job. As a matter of fact, one of your had ordered some pants and we had them adjusted. So uh, she does a great job. Other questions? Yeah. These are all performance fabrics. And so they wick away. Pardon me? Polyester. Uh, some have polyester. Most do. This is a special knit that's um, one of my custom fabrics. And it's got everything has a little tiny bit of spandex in it so that it's very supple and comfortable. And you'll notice when you sit in them, you don't end up having a, a seat when you stand up or knees when you stand up. Polyester is in, in most of them. And um, the performance fabric allows so that if you uh, are struggling with any kind of body temperature changes, you don't notice it as much. I've worn this dress out in 80, when I first met Lauren, 80 some degree weather and I wasn't sweating. And there, when it's really cold like this, it's comfortable. It's not perfect and I'm still working on some of the fabrics, but also the weight of it. This is one that I'll have on a regular basis because it's very, very comfortable in home and in community living and then when you're transitioning around. And I want to show you how, how easy it is to get out of this as well, if you don't mind sitting first. So if you're seated and you're the one that's assisting with dressing, unzipping both, and then you're going to just pull it off the shoulders. And again, watching that the arm's not coming up over or being at an angle that's uncomfortable. And could you see this, sir, well enough? Okay. And then if you were to stand up and if there, you can imagine a, a something in front, it literally just falls off. And you can put it on from the bottom up as well. Thank you, Joel. Just toss it there. Now, the men's shirt, I've, um, this just came in. Everything, everything you see except the women's pants and a couple of the pajamas and the jeans, I have in inventory here in Greenville, South Carolina, and it'll be readily available uh, online. And anything you purchase for the next week, you'll all get a discount code that it's 25% off anything you purchase. 
and so I'll give you a chance to, to try them. And if size doesn't work for you, just let me know and we'll, we'll do an exchange. Any other questions? Yes. I will be coming out with, um, these are the versions of a nightshirt for men and women, and it's a little bit softer. And the reason, I do have pajamas as well, and I'll let you feel this fabric. It's not the silky, silky yet, but that'll be coming, but the same concept. And pockets for women, most men aren't too worried about it, but gentlemen, if you've ever been in a hospital, you know, do you, you, know, it's, you know what was missing? Yeah, exactly. Well, it was interesting because that was one of the first things. Again, what we, we entrepreneurs, and we're all entrepreneurial in some nature, learning from what we experience. And one of the things that I learned when my dad was up in one of the select care hospitals in Erie, Pennsylvania, he would not get out of bed and do the exercise. And so I flew up there, and this is when they told me, you know, probably not going to see your dad any longer, try to get up here as soon as possible. And I went, up, Dad, what's wrong with you? And he said, they want me to walk around without any clothes on. <laughs> And so they were layering the, the hospital gowns, one in the front and one in the back, in pale yellow, which for a big six foot guy, he did not feel very masculine walking down the hallway. So we did some testing and this works because it's easy for someone to get in and out of and it can change, but when he walks down the hall, he doesn't have to worry about his backside hanging out. And then I did do a version of a men's pajama and these will be coming out soon, I hope. And I'll demonstrate with the shirt how this works. There's a company that if you don't have a pace baker, which my father does, so he can't use it, but there's a company out of North Carolina, and I think it's called Magna Shirt, and it's all magnetized underneath the placket. The woman's husband had Parkinson's, he was a coach for a football team, and she invented, and it's a wonderful line, and I've seen the shirts, beautifully made. They do men's and women's magnetized shirts. Again, if you don't have a pacemaker, they work really well. For someone that has a pacemaker, and this is a prototype, what? that's why the zipper doesn't match, but it's easy to put on and off. One button at the top allows it to stay on, but it's a zipper under the placket. So again, if you're the caregiver, you can zip it quickly. If you're not the caregiver and buttons are a struggle, it's a larger size zipper head at the bottom. And then there also is a vest. I've had a lot of gentlemen who are professionals asking for a vest to wear over. And this is the style, it'll have our typical this will become known as our signature zipper that it's a little bit easier to grasp. So that's the, and the men's shirts are really attractive, very good quality. And denim jeans are something that most men want. And um, this is one version just to try and test what it's the actual style that you see out in the regular marketplace. And again, the, the um, adjustment on the, ba on the waist and the zippers on the side. This is a little bit longer zipper that's a little bit even easier. So that's an example of the jeans. And this is a four-way stretch. Very, very comfortable if you have to be seated for long periods of time. Any other questions? Uh, I'm going to have Becky come up now, if you don't mind. So the one other dress that I didn't show, and I'm trying to be cognizant of the time here, Have you sit down if you would, please. For you gentlemen that might be assisting a woman dressing, we have the same polo style. And some of the frustration that men have shared is their, their wives want to look nice, and the ones that typically would wear a dress or want to be dressed up, what about them? The three-quarter sleeves are easier to dress with. The long ones just don't work with this motion. Because you have on a turn, I'm going to do it this way. Again, over the head without even affecting the hair, which is important to us women. Sorry, my hands are still freezing from being outside. Just put your arm here. You notice her arm's not going up over her shoulders. And if she were seated in a situation where I didn't want to tug and pull, and then if you stand up once, and then you can, so you can why don't you go ahead and demonstrate? If it catches in the zipper, it's just so you get it. Again, zipper, zipper guard so you don't pinch skin. And that's how easy it was for her to put the dress on. And it's another one of those where she has it layered with a turtleneck. So anything from adding a scarf or jewelry, changing the scarf so you can change the look of it. 
And then if we were to belt this, completely make it personable to her. Thank you. And this is a lighter fabric, so for the southern, this is called the bird's eye mesh, and I'm going to show you how. Yes, if you see, if you're seated. And the zippers are sizable enough that you can actually grasp it and pull. So if you do have some limitations in zippers, a lot of people say I can't wear zippers. They might not be able to use the traditional dress zippers, but this is a little bit different, but you don't notice it when you look at it. Did you find that to be a struggle when you were non-zipping? Zippers are not. And then if you just, yes. Mm -hmm. But you don't notice it when they're standing up mm -hmm. because it's designed so when it hangs down, it, there's, a, there's a special place for it. And then if she were seated, if you want to stand up, you just literally, you don't have to take her completely up. And then it's the same motion. You just have to get a grip under the arm. Do both sides before you try to take it over your head. Let you put your arm back through. And then up over the head. And that's how easy it is to dress. Thank you so much. And I would uh, also share with you that I worked with a group of men down in Columbia that they have dementia and Alzheimer's, wives that have dementia and Alzheimer's. And one of the things that they shared with me, it's a real struggle to dress because they can tend to get combative. And if they're doing something different every day and the garment goes on a different way, it's another struggle, how do I get dressed in the morning? And as we all know, whatever happens in the morning can send you in a downward spiral, and not just you personally, but everybody in your household. And so this made it easier. Again, you would be seated. I'm gonna just demonstrate. I'm gonna use a larger one because I have a dress on, but this is how simple it is. Probably set the alarm thing off. <laughs> I'll do it here. So, gentlemen, it's literally you would start on the floor, stand up once, downward motion, up on the shoulders. So, if someone is struggling against dressing, they don't have a chance to really struggle as much. That's how quickly it goes on. And at the end of the day, which really they're tired, you're tired because of the caregiving. It's a quick off the shoulders, stand up once, it falls off, sit back down, and then you just put on the night clothing. So the whole design was to make it easy for both people. Any other questions? Can you say you have supplies in Greenville? I do. I do. Where is that? Uh, at my house right now, and then uh, <laughs> a lot at my house. I, I, I just... Um, onboarded with a company called McKesson, and you're going to be able to access it through their website. And the other is, I've been working with Brookdale, it's a long-term care community. They're about 1,100 across the United States, and they're going to be carrying this clothing in one of their catalogs in their communities. And that'll be starting here in the next couple of months. And I think the best way to sum it up with them, I, I spoke with a woman yesterday that hadn't seen the clothing, but she's heard from, from within Brookdale the different clients that have been using it. They've moved it back to their independent living category, and I'm going down to do an event there because she said, I understand that allows people to maintain their independence longer. And that was truly my goal. If a person can dress themselves as much as possible, it starts the day with feeling they can overcome some of the other obstacles. But we all get up every day and we have to get dressed, and we women know if we're trying to zip up the back of our dress and our husband's out of town and there isn't anybody else, you, it's, it's a real struggle. So for someone who has limitations, that struggle can become more about their sense of self-worth and dignity. And this clothing is designed. I have one woman that I met at the um, Michael J. Fox who struggles with Parkinson's, and she's up in Asheville. And she asked to try this. And when, when we went in and she tried it herself and she came out, she said, well, I can get it zipped till there. And I said, wow. Just think, if all you have to do is ask your husband to zip this as he's kissing you on your way out the door and he says, you look beautiful, have a great day. It completely changes the whole mood of the day. The person dressing themselves has a sense of accomplishment and then can move on to the next task at hand with a sense that I've already come, overcome some things that yesterday were a struggle. So this, if you look at this line of clothing instead of fashion, think of it, this as a way to strengthen your daily activities. The ADLs become more and more of a struggle for everybody. And from the caregiver perspective, having been in that role, the whole idea is to be able to assist and supply 
whatever gives you the tools to make your day more successful. Any other questions? Yes. Well, I have mine that everybody keeps trying to take, so I'm, I'm meeting with somebody that my, my manufacturer, and we're going to be coming out with those very, very soon. So, oh, you just want to wrap with a zip. We, we'll, we'll be doing that. Uh, this helps me because I, I do listen to whatever you're saying, and we do build prototypes, and then I test them. And I, I do have uh, contact with Lauren, so I will be asking some of you as memberships to try out some of these garments. And some of your peers are actually doing that for me. And I learn things all the time. And those I will start to incorporate as much as I can. So I will try to do that for you. No promises, but I will try. Yes, Cindy. Brenda, I just wanted to add, you, you pointed out an awful lot of really good features. And I will just tell you from wearing this kind of an item, when you can get up close and really touch it and see it, what you find is, for example, Thank you. Thank you very much. Well, thank you so much, thank Brenda, you, you for, for being here. And I uh, appreciate all of your flexibility and our excitement today. Uh, we look forward to our next um, speaker meeting will be in April.